Um, I have taken the liberty of changing the title uh, of this uh, session to Citizens Can Make a Difference, as opposed to Can They, uh, because that actually is the message of, of, of my book. Um, it draws on the uh, experiences uh, we've had uh, in supporting over 200 projects uh, uh, run by civil society organizations, by citizen groups in uh, uh, some 53 different countries across uh, the globe. Uh, these are projects which they initiated, which we supported, uh, and it's an entirely, as it were, a locally driven uh, set of experiences. Uh, and it's their story, actually, that has been told uh, in, in this book. Um, there are two key messages that come out of it, and I just want to put them on the table right from the beginning because uh, that's what we want to discuss. First of all, I mean, governance reform can and can only be, in my 50 years' experience on this, uh, driven from within a country. Uh, the idea that donors can actually impose any kind of conditionality on the in the area of governance uh, and make uh, governments do things that they do not want to do uh, is a myth. And of course, uh, in a very large number of countries where we're operating, they do not want to change because the system suits them fine. Uh, they are the predatory elite <coughs> in power, funding themselves and their political activities. Uh, and you know, why would they want to change? Uh, and so the uh, last bit of that uh, proposition is to say uh, that donors need to radically rethink their uh, assistance strategies for promoting governance reform to take into account uh, this political uh, reality. Um, the uh, book is based on PTF's experience. So very, very rapidly, let me say that uh, PTF uh, was founded in 2000. Uh, it was run by a, se a series of uh, people who had years and years of experience in development as volunteers. Almost no one has ever been paid uh, who's worked in PDF. We have over 50 advisors. We've never had uh, a problem of finding advisors. Uh, it's amazing how committed people are uh, to, to, to addressing the issues of corruption. Uh, and uh, just so you know, uh, you know where our money came from, uh, is listed there, so I don't want to, I want to be totally transparent. We are very grateful to DFID for having provided a two million pound grant out of the GDF, uh, and that has supported us very significantly uh, over the last uh, five years. Uh, so that's the kind of geographic uh, coverage uh, displayed on that slide, uh, just to show how, uh, how widespread it is. Uh, now, you may ask, wha what kinds of projects did we support? Well, uh, there were a great range of projects, but they fall into a broad number of <laughs> categories. First of all, public procurement is obviously the place where most corruption takes place, or a huge amount of corruption takes place, large contracts. Uh, uh, perhaps the second area of, 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 of large-scale predation is on public uh, misdirection uh, of public expenditure or s theft of public funds. Uh, but a very important part of our work has been uh, built trying to support building the legal framework uh, and uh, making uh, public services more honest, uh, the social audit work, social accountability, uh, and lastly, strengthening uh, the, uh, the media as uh, investigative reporting, but trying to do so. Always, in fact, every one of these projects is not uh, so much as uh, uh, creating awareness of that's important or training and building capacity of that's important. It is actually at the cull face. That's why we have really called it a report from the front line. This is engaging directly with the agencies that are corrupt, uh, monitoring them and trying to change them uh, and trying to get results uh, uh, that are measurable uh, and significant. Um, then... Uh, the important part of this was that these were very small grants, 10, 20, 30, 40,000 at the most, uh, and they were supported by the volunteer advisors who would provide technical assistance in uh, helping improve the design of, of various uh, proposals. Uh, and what is uh, remarkable is the impact they've had in rooting out corruption. 
Uh, literally, they have saved millions of dollars in some cases. I've never kind of added up the total that we might claim because it's very difficult to do, but we're talking of hundreds of millions of dollars that have been generated by a, a total 10-year expenditure uh, of, of not, not much more than uh, eight or nine uh, million uh, uh, dollars. Uh, so it's a very uh, substantial impact. It uh, also involves um, pushing through new laws and codes. So you've got measurable impact in saving money, uh, pushing through new laws, uh, or at least getting them on the, uh, uh, into Parliament if they haven't been yet enacted. Uh, significant uh, resignation of, of senior officials. We count our, our scalps, the Chief Justice, uh, a, a, a Speaker of a National Assembly, uh, directors of projects and so forth. So it's, it's uh, quite interesting uh, also the, that kind of impact. Let me give you uh, just a, f a, a few examples. I, I haven't got enough time uh, really to, uh, and therefore that's why you have to get this book, by the way. <laughs> uh, uh, but our first project was in Bulgaria. We were asked uh, uh, by uh, TI Bulgaria, who'd in turn been asked by the Prime Minister of Bulgaria to monitor an auction of a mobile phone license. The outcome of that, getting a panel in, getting uh, people to uh, independently verify the whole auction process, put up the value of that uh, final uh, price uh, by 20 to 30 million. Uh, nobody can, of course, say exactly, but if you compare it to the previous auction that had been very corrupt, this was that much more successful. Uh, in uh, Pakistan, the Karachi Water and Sewage Board uh, was uh, persuaded by an organization called the Nadians to introduce an integrity pact. Uh, I haven't uh, uh, time to explain to you what an integrity pact is, but that was a $100 million project, and we reckoned, uh, compared to uh, what had been estimated on basis of previous contracts, that they saved 16 million out of 100 million. Uh, more recently, in uh, the Cross River State in Nigeria, uh, its CSO had worked to strengthen the training and, and, and uh, uh, procedures on the um, review of procurement, uh, and they themselves estimated that they had saved within the first nine months, actually, 2.7 million. And that, of course, is a benefit that will continue uh, uh, year after year. And uh, that was a $25,000 uh, $25, grant. Uh, uh, in Azerbaijan, uh, on public expenditure, uh, an organization called the uh, Center for Economic uh, and Social Studies, which is a very highly reputed organization, uh, was auditing the use of oil money, a natural complement of actually EITI, which is not just how much money is paid in from oil revenue, but how, what, how that money is used. Uh, they were auditing various expenditures, and they recovered, on, on one case, 50 million uh, related to the resettlement of uh, uh, refugees from Ngorno Karabakh, uh, the Ngorno Karabakh uh, disaster, and then uh, uh, 12 million on the railway uh, between uh, uh, Baku and, and, and Turkey that goes through Georgia. This was money which actually was repaid, having been identified as missing. Uh, and then we had uh, two other cases on the book, uh, which is are listed there, which I don't have time to go into, but I, and of course many more. Uh, but I know that I'm under the clock here, and I have to keep going. So I will go as fast as I can. Um, uh, an interesting case in the Philippines was young people in Mindanao were organized by an organization called Echolink uh, to use their mobile phones uh, to record the misuse of of municipal vehicles by f uh, public officials. Uh, they took photographs and they posted them on the internet. Uh, the result of that was uh, uh, estimated a saving in the, in, 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 in the use of vehicles, uh, saving on uh, uh, gas and uh, diesel fuel and so forth, uh, of uh, uh, 215,000. The government's so impressed they've actually uh, uh, taken that program and tried to spread it throughout the Philippines. Uh, or another case where they used young people, uh, this was a case of a government watch from a 10-year university. Uh, they used young people, scouts mainly, to track the production and distribution of, of school textbooks. 
uh, and that resulted uh, in a 3.6 uh, million uh, uh, um, saving. I'm sorry, I hope everybody can hear, is that right? Yeah, no, I yeah. Have, sorry, I, I have been warned that I need to ask you to keep the microphone very close. Very close, very close, <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> sorry. Um, so in, in terms of uh, building a, a, a legal framework, people worked on, on uh, the uh, right to information, freedom of information, conflict of interest, whistleblowing protection laws, all of those uh, covering many countries, uh, uh, India, Argentina, Sierra Leone, Lithuania, Mongolia, Moldova, uh, Uganda, all uh, have uh, had uh, uh, actions there. Uh, and quite interesting actually also is, is, is trying to establish or persuade people to have put in place codes of ethics uh, which uh, uh, will uh, guide professional behavior. Judges, teachers, doctors, police. Uh, for example, in Mongolia, uh, TI Mongolia worked uh, uh, to establish a code of ethics for, for the judiciary, which is now part of the law course uh, and adopted by the Association of Judges, and they train 400 judges in, in, in that and, 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 and how, to, how, to, how to conduct cases involving corruption. Uh, in uh, Kigezi in Uganda, uh, Nafodu uh, worked with the local police to establish a code of conduct uh, and to use the radio to publicize this and uh, uh, have the police uh, involved and, and citizens uh, on call-in programs. Uh, all this is kind of very brief. I, I have to be very brief, but uh, uh, the stories are much more interesting if you go into the details. In India, we worked with 15 CSOs uh, to uh, try to strengthen the delivery of uh, social benefits to so the National Rural Employment Scheme, the uh, uh, PDS, the uh, Public Delivery System of Free Food, uh, and the National uh, uh, Rural Health Mission. Uh, and uh, there, I mean, it, fascinating results, and you know, put together vigilance committees and, uh, uh, and monitoring committees in the villages, uh, make them aware of their rights, use the uh, uh, right to information law to get the details of who received what and why the wrong people were receiving it. Uh, we re reckon just with those 15 pr uh, uh, projects, we touched uh, over 250,000 people in terms of poor people getting their benefits who hadn't got them before. And of course this could be replicated many times if the resources were available. And not much in the way of resources. It wasn't, uh, we think that maybe for every two or three dollars spent, uh, the benefits that were reaching the poor people were 20 or 30 times that. Um, so, um, there are, in fact, an idea of what so I think Naomi uh, Hassan has uh, called rough justice. Uh, you know, this is a large number of people uh, uh, demonstrating about the fact that they're not receiving their benefits. Uh, this is a picture which I like because it's, uh, it comes from Uganda, a story of, of, of a NGO that has been working with uh, school monitoring committees. Uh, both to monitor m the, their budgets and to make sure that they uh, they get uh, 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 th that the funds that they have are used properly and that the buildings that are being constructed are in fact properly constructed and they make them reconstruct them and they find them uh, with flaws. Now this is a boy who's uh, uh, part of an ethics education program. He's he's acting the big man who's got fat on corruption. Uh, I won't go into that because I only have three minutes, but it, it basically uh, what we're talking about is empowering citizens. Uh, I want to make sort of two points about this. One, it's a long-term endeavor. None of this stuff is short-term. All we've done is to show it can be done and to get it started. Uh, a lot of other people are doing it. You know, It's not just us. What bothers me, though, is in the literature, it's not recognized how successful this is, how important this is. Social audit works, uh, monitoring works, and it works not just at the village level, it works at the national level. I mean, TI India has now uh, several hundred integrity packs with the major power companies dealing with billions of dollars, which they're monitoring. Uh, and a project which cost us 25,000, again. Um, 
The second thing is we're not talking about one action, we're talking about millions of actions so that you reach the tipping point where corruption, corruption is no longer tolerated. Uh, but we have to get to that momentum if we're going to make that impact, otherwise it will fall back into the old ways. You've got to build momentum. Uh, everyone has to be inv involved in this exercise. Uh, so what makes for success? Uh, first of all, and, and uh, this is perhaps controversial and, and needs discussion, but we believe in constructive engagement. And th there are the green piece, uh, pieces and the uh, uh, advocacy groups that go in for confrontation. But we find that if local CSOs want to achieve results, the best results they achieve is when they can engage constructively with the public agencies. There are always their champions who will share their concerns and one can work with them uh, much more uh, effectively than if you go uh, uh, on, on, a, on a kind of uh, campaign to put people in prison. Uh, that, re uh, that creates a very harsh reaction from, from, from the uh, public agencies. But if you say, in the future, can we not make this work better, you know, then there is a much more receptive uh, audience. Uh, the other things, of course, is that NGOs that we've worked with and CSOs we've worked with uh, tend to be very ambitious. You need to be very sharply focused on, on what you're trying to achieve and you need to be very thorough in understanding what the problem is and you need to have a learning approach. Uh, and that, I would say, particularly to the donor agency, it has to be a learning approach. This is something not that you try and doesn't work and you reject it, but you try, it doesn't work, you find out why it doesn't work and you try to <coughs> do it again in a way that will work. So you've got to be really persistent. We're talking about a 25-year horizon here, a 50-year horizon. We're not talking about, you know, the next year and the year after. Um, so our key findings uh, are that m modest projects, this is not a you know, not a lot of money can have a massive impact. Uh, there is a huge reservoir of energy and enthusiasm uh, out there waiting to be tapped. Uh, and people are really worked up about corruption. It's not true that people tolerate corruption. They don't tolerate it. They don't like it. They have to tolerate it, but they don't like it. Uh, direct action is no substitute for the formal institutions that the government should have in place to do this work. So we need to work on that side too. Citizens need to monitor the, the performance of the audit uh, the, uh, of the inspector generals, of the, of, of the of, uh, officials whose job it is to make things happen. Uh, citizen engagement, uh, you know, it, this, this is, uh, is something that has to be sustained. That's really, and we need funding that is sustained. And it, you need to work towards domestic funding, but it's you, you, you won't get domestic funding initially. It's going to be time to build up the capacity to raise resources within, within the country. Uh, I don't have time for that. I will go on to uh, the, the key lessons learned. I, I go back to these governments will only be accountable if they're made to be by their citizens. Uh, and you can't impose it from the outside. Uh, mass movements, that's another I think strong thing. You know, you, you can have a mass movement to create the orange revolution, the purple revolution, doesn't matter what. But what happens three years later, two years later? Are you back into the same sort of corrupt system? You replace a regime uh, through an uprising, but it doesn't need, it means to say that you put in place a better regime uh, because uh, that only takes place when you work on the systems of accountability and you, and you, and you have constant uh, su supervision, oversight, monitoring, tracking. Uh, so what do the donors have to do? Uh, well, and uh, you know, I, I spent my life in this business as a World Bank official and elsewhere. So I totally take responsibility for, for our failures. But we failed. Let's face it, we failed. We tried again and again to persuade governments, to cajole governments, to force governments into reform. And they, 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 the rhetoric was wonderful, but the action was useless. It was rubbish. Pierre, the watchdog is coming. Hmm? The watchdog is yeah, coming. Yeah, well, I, that's yes. <laughs> uh, so 
I mean, donors need to absolutely rethink the way they do it. They must recognize that citizens are the key. They must recognize that they have to keep a very low profile with citizens organizations because they can't do directly with them. They have to work through other organizations like PDF, for example. Then. I mean, really low level uh, engagements. You, if you see yourself coming, you know, as the US government or the British government telling a government what to do, uh, you're lost. And I mean, donors have to be engaged for the long term. I mean, I did say it for so long, I don't know. But I mean, it's no good starting a program like GTF and then dropping it. You've got to continue. You've got to learn what you've learned from it. And then you have phase two. And then you learn again and you have phase three. You don't drop it. This is a 25 to 50 year uh, deal. And politicians and senior officials in aid agencies who think they can make their mark by doing something new are the biggest menace that we have in this world. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much, Pierre. Um, I turn now over to Frederick, whom I should also have acknowledged as, a, as an inspiration for this meeting because I have been in uh, conversations with Claire Schouten, who's in the audience, for some time to try to bring uh, some of the work that you guys have been doing um, um, in discussion. So thank you. Thank you very much.